Welcome back to another Bitchin' uh, for another episode of The Couch. And with us this week, we've got four fantastic bitches to bitch some topics for you. Let me introduce them from right to left. There, Cameron Kippen, podiatrist. Thank Hi, you very yeah. much. Natalie Foster, of course, RSPCA inspector. Welcome back. Hello. Kama, I'm not going to even attempt your surname because can you say it for me? Rajandran. Rajandran, there you go. She's a PR consultant for? The Heart Foundation. Beautiful, thank you very much. And this lady that's sitting next to me, of course, photographer, Houndstooth Studio proprietor, and a wonderful lady it is, of course, Alex Kearns. Thanks Welcome back. Hi. Nice to have you all back here today. We've got four fantastic topics. How about we start with Cameron today at the end? Oh, with yours yes, with today, me. being the sole man on the, on the, the soul spot, man. apart from myself. Yes, that's right. <laughs> We're talking about um, the gentrification of door people. Because apparently there's a company in Perth who, mm -hmm. in fact, have decided they're going to upmarket the, the old bouncer on the door and they're going to make them much more user-friendly, uh, not necessarily so muscle-bound, but mm -hmm. certainly more akin to the establishment they're in, sufficiently well enough that the well-spoken and uh, uh, highly trained um, commissioners, I think is the best word, will actually be able to help and assist the drunks as they throw them out. So and tell are them we talking about bouncers no longer bouncing people out of a well, place, a big security? Well, they presumably have they're trained in that kind of um, situation, but what they do is they play much less to try to help people out. And I've seen the, a photo um, of the new looking bouncers. You've got youth, you've got largeness, you've got smallness, you've got tallness. Sure. So it's not the um, stereotypical it's not security your tattooed, guard you're looking for. Um, muscle bound type yeah. like myself. You'll see on the door, bald heads. <laughs> It'll be somebody with a you know master's degree in mm. communication. But that's like. I don't know, like a, a ritual, isn't it? A coming of age thing is going to the pub and getting bounced out by well, some I think knob probably that, you know, hasn't got a brain cell in his head. Absolutely. I think what they're trying to do is just upmarket, identify. And so is this after, the industry? Is it the industry that's doing this? Or is well, it's one company and they, okay. they clearly are very successful with what they've done and presumably are encouraging others to do the same. Natalie, what do you know? Say? Well, I was going to say there's actually a few females getting in on the security side yeah. of things too and they think that, that men actually don't react as badly when females are really? involved. So they actually try to behave themselves. Whether that means, you know, after six schooners they're going to be the same way with a female, but that's what they, they reckon that's, that's another reason why they're introducing yeah. more females into the security staff. Kama, what, what do you think? I found it interesting that in the story they mentioned that some of these security people had PhDs and... Is it that they can't find jobs and <laughs> well... think that everyone can... <laughs> Maybe they just take it whatever they can and, get. I mean, it's great that they have the knowledge of what services are offered in the establishment and where you can get taxis and things like that, but I don't think you need a PhD for that. I, I'm, I'm very interested in hearing what you have to say, Alex, because from your previous employment as a police officer, I remember when police officers were there to, to follow the law and make sure everybody else did. Yeah. Now they're becoming psychologists, they're mm. becoming social workers. Mm. Yeah. Do you find that that's a trend with the sort of industry, whether it's police or security, they want them to be more, uh, how do you say it, brain, a brain fit sort of thing, yeah, where they, they understand people? Definitely, because even in police when I was there, they had a thing called verbal judo. And it was all basically getting people to agree to do what you wanted, but through communication. I thought so you were going to say, you go, ah, yeah, <laughs> just with your tongue. <laughs> so yeah, that how did that um, work? Well, it was just, you know, um, someone, you know, going off at you on the street and you say, okay, I, I appreciate your point of view, but... And I think they're, they're probably trying to do this a little bit with the bouncers, but you still need, a, I guess, a security force. Mm. When people are drinking and they've got glasses in their hands and there's all the one punch hits and, and yeah, one punch mm. glassings and all that sort of stuff, you need to know that you're safe if you're just standing in the corner. And, you know, so you yeah. guys think it's a good move, but with um, hesitation, balance, maybe? Yeah. You yeah. need a balance. Yeah. As long as you've got a meathead like, with the, or the carry ones a with the HD. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a I mean that in the yes. most respectful I, I was at a gentleman's club in the South Pound right. and they were putting on a strip mate and when we went down, uh, the girls had nothing on whatsoever. Mm. And I happened to be speaking to the barman, as one does, yep. and I said to him, you know, the girls where I come from, whether they've got clothes on or not, they're vulnerable to attacks. Mm. He goes, nobody will touch them here, mate. He says, these are bikey girls. Oh, Fair oh, enough. Okay. Well, it's a good trend. Let's uh, keep an eye on it, see where it goes. Natalie, what have you got for us? Well, I'm just going to bring the level of the show. Up or down? Right down. Oh, good. It's me, you know, that's what you'd expect. Never has the phrase, it's all fun and games till somebody gets hurt, rung so true. There's an English guy over in the UK. He's out with his buddies. And his buddies were explaining to him uh, what a Dutch oven was. He's never experienced what is a, Dutch a Dutch oven. oven? Just for it's the basically sake of where panel. you're in bed and you've got the quilt, and uh, somebody may be underneath the quilt, and then the other person holding the quilt down may 
um, expel some out. gas. Like Let a Polly out of prison, so to speak. Now, the guy's never tried it before, and he thinks that's Open a really good box. idea. He's out with his mates. Yep. He's had an Indian. This is what he's eaten. A dozen onion bhajis, eight poppadoms, six samosas, uh, extra large beef vindaloo with garlic naan. I'm amazed. Eight Gas pints, is all he let out. Eight pints of Guinness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine remember? that. So, all fun and games. I know. Oops. I'm going to go home to the missus. I'm going to give her a Dutch oven. And the poor love is in bed. She's reading a Jackie Collins novel. And I think she that says a lot about her life. And all of a sudden, he's forcibly pinned her down, put the blanket over the top of them, the duvet, the quilt over the top of them, and let loose. She then, straight away, she's, she's out for the count. She's dead. Are you serious? I'm serious. She's dead within 30 seconds. Because of the smell. Did the... But the, the 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 meat thing, yeah. oxygen. Well, what, the, the, what they reckon it, it happened was that because he'd pinned down, allowing no yeah. no gaps, there's no air leakage oh, wow. whatsoever. It's a so she <laughs> she receives six liters of gas containing 35% methane. Oh wow! I'm sorry, it's not funny, but no. I I'm, I'm channeling my nine-year-old boy that I once was, possibly in a former <laughs> life. I, I still find farts funny, but obviously <laughs> but she's he seriously passed, passed away. Well, the dead. And how, could dead. you imagine what you'd be like as the husband going, "Okay, you can wake up now." Yeah. Oh, it was a joke. He he was shocked, um, and you know, Gob scap. Gob, uh, but gobs, they they tried to the do him. He's, he's been done for second degree manslaughter. Mm. But this is ironic. This is fantastic. Mm. He's got outside the court. He's very. Uh, emotional he's very weary he said I'm truly sorry for what I did to my wife and living with the guilt of the punishment you know that's the punishment enough I just hope others will learn so this is going to be my bit to camera yep I swear I would never ever fart in a woman's face again at least not in private <laughs> so that's terrible, just still isn't it? but how could you could you imagine Stand this over. poor man having to go back to her family and say look I know I farted and I killed her I know. I mean, harlotosis is... Yeah, yeah but you, you know, you can't even brush this underneath. You, you why can't get away from Why did you tell anyone this, the story? It's on Facebook. I know. Yeah, why didn't you media? just say she passed away in her sleep? Like, How know, did they know? Yeah. And, They're and not exactly going to do an autopsy and find methane gas. She was under the covers and didn't have any oxygen. The thing is, the court case actually comes up in Peckham in London. Now, if you watch Only Fools and Horses, there's a wonderful story there about blow-up dolls, which... Um, they blow up and they go <laughs> <laughs> blow away. But so there's some irony. How, how would it work as a police sort of evidence thing? Would they do an autopsy? Would they find methane gas? How would you know oh, what caused know. her death? They'd definitely do an autopsy, but what they'd, well, I don't know how. They'd, they'd probably, yeah, they'd they would find asphyxia. Could yeah, you imagine the, the like death certificate? And... Dying of being farted. <laughs> I know. Could anyway. you imagine the cops <laughs> storming in there going, Medicine, medicine, and then just... Oh, maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> we'll come back again later. Something not oh. to try at home, certainly. No. Definitely. Came up. This story here with the great debate number two that came on the other, another boring event on television. <laughs> Can I just say, before you talk about this event, this debate, did you guys know that the when John Howard had a debate with Kevin Rudd in 2007, three million of us <clears throat> watched it. Apparently, the two that we've had with Kevin Rudd and Tony Abbott, we've, we've been lucky to get half a million on the first and 300,000 on the second one. Is that because nobody cares? Well, I yeah. think people just can't be bothered. They've made up their minds or they just they, they, they think everyone's a liar and they can't be bothered. But, Kama, tell us about this one. OK, so the story I have today, you probably would have seen it in the news because it was everywhere, despite the fact that there are people dying in this world. Mm. There's big news that Kevin Rudd was rude to a makeup artist. Oh, it's not like him to be rude to someone. No, so... Can you, can you read for us what the lady quoted on her Facebook? The lady what she posted wrote? on her Facebook almost straight away after the show. Just finished doing Kevin Rudd and Tony Abbott's makeup for the People's Forum at the Broncos Le Leagues Club. One of them was absolutely lovely, engaged in genuine conversation with me, acknowledged that I had a job to do and was very appreciative. The other did the exact opposite. Oh boy, I have ever had anyone treat me so badly whilst trying to do my job. Political opinions aside, from one human being to another, Mr Abbott, you win hands down. And then she took that down the next and day. She took and, it down. and I have to tell you something, because I'm a conservative and I've said it before, but to be fair on both sides with this one, uh, the next morning the newspapers and the news TV programs were full of it, if you can call it that. And they asked the Prime Minister, what did you think about you know, this lady and what she said? He said, well, she has apologised and she's taken it off the, the website and all this sort of thing. And it was quite funny that all the journalists said she didn't need to apologise. Mm. He seems to always forget that he's the one that upset the person mm. and it always comes across as if it's the other person that's had a rethink. Yeah. So I'd be interested. Cameron, what do you think of this story? Murdoch Press. 
So I put no store on it whatsoever. I think it's trivia to extreme, and the it West typifies. Australian, to be fair, the West Australian election. also took that angle where they they took the Prime Minister's side. So are you saying the Murdoch press are yeah. against the Prime Minister? Oh yeah, you... very much. But the oh, point okay. being is it's trivia, mm. and it's, it's typifies it? what's going on in the election. I think the idea that we now have a very serious issue developing in Syria probably gives a better focus mm. for the mm. aptitude of the successful candidate. What about you, Nat? It's politics. I don't do politics. It's crap. Yeah, it, it is. It's just one woman's opinion, um, and and I'm I think it wouldn't even it. make it wouldn't even make press, and he wouldn't be called you know Mr. Rude and, and all the other things that have been said about him if it wasn't so close to the election. Yep. It wouldn't even. It wouldn't get have even made news. No. What about you, Cammy? Did you like the story? You think it's stupid? Yeah, I think it was pretty stupid, especially considering everything going on in Syria. Mm. Like, why do we need to know it's what so one person thinks? Yep. Mm. In, in a makeup room as well. Like and it took over a whole day's press. I'm thinking, geez, we must have nothing else better to talk about. Well, we have. We've got people yeah. Dutch ovening. I mean, yeah. this <laughs> and clearly Alex. is a more important story. Alex, what do you yeah. think? Uh, I think it's ridiculous as well. And like I said, Fred, we're in trouble if that's news, especially yeah. political news. And at the end of the day, you know, if it's early in the morning and you're having your makeup done, when I have my makeup done, I'm a bit grumpy. I'm sometimes. the same when I have it at the show. You I don't know? like it. Yeah, same. And so. it's quite funny because Kevin Rudd did say, you know, I, oh, I was in a hurry. I had two minutes. She had to put the makeup on. I had a face on. She might have taken it the wrong way. Yeah. But what he's, somebody else said, one of his minders, just a couple of days ago, apparently Kevin Rudd does about 18 interviews a day and he gets makeup on him about 30 times a day. So well, they thought it was good. quite rich to and say that he And let's also was... not forget that she did give him extended eyelashes and, and ruby yes. red lipstick. So he's the one upset because red's not his piece. colour. And did anyone, did anyone else pick up on the fact she said one of them was nice and one of them was terrible? So she obviously didn't meet Tony Abbott either. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's Mr Mean, remember. Next, Alex Keynes, please. Kearns. Let me get your name right Thanks, first. Fred. No worries, Brian. Um, what do you, so how today? do you reckon my makeup looks? <laughs> it looks great. Oh, you, do need, you do need more Mr. lipstick. Rude, yeah. Thank you. I will have nice a word red. to my makeup <laughs> artist. Nice red. Ruby red. Thank you. Um, I, I was quite interested this week in the news, the story on the fake meat, the synthetic meat that they've made in the Netherlands. They've been working on it for a few years and it's, it's cost about $400,000 to make a beef patty from cow cells. And the hope is, I guess, in the future to feed millions of people quite cheaply using this synthetic meat. Now, I don't actually personally eat meat. It's just an ethical decision that I've made. But I don't know if I'd eat synthetic meat, even if it wasn't from a cow. If it was Did it not from cost $300,000 yeah, for yeah, this test, the study? $400,000 $400, per steak. Yeah, to make one beef patty. Um, they also added in beetroot and saffron to make it look the right colour. Could you imagine if there was GST rum. on that? It would yeah. be like $440,000. It's <laughs> so, 2 o'clock in the morning. You wouldn't so be what do you think? Do you think... There's much in this, or do you think people are going to say, how can we make it cheaper? I think there's a lot of problems with, um, you know, to, speaking of Dutch ovens. Um, <laughs> you know, Let's bring it back to that again. <laughs> you know, cows <laughs> and, and um, greenhouse gases and things like that, and farming and factory farming, and people are more aware of what they eat. So it's possibly an option to phase out live animal kind of, I, as, I as spoke food about source. the story last <clears throat> night while you are talking about that. Yep. And, and I said to the person, I think she was a vegetarian, I actually said to her, why don't we just find alternatives to meat rather than try and create a fake meat. Exactly, exactly. Surely if vegetarians yep. and, and vegans can live quite well with alternatives, mm, so got soy why don't we now. just go for alternatives? Why do we have to create something for the meat lovers? Like, I love meat, yeah. but I don't eat as much of it because of the gastric banding thing. Mm. So I don't care if I don't have that much meat anymore. I'll eat chicken or I'll eat fish, mm. right? So, Would you eat synthetic meat? No, like something made no. in a test I, tube? I couldn't be bothered. I, if, I, if I wanted meat, I'd have real meat. Mm. I'm not one... Look. I understand all the arguments against killing animals and all that, don't get me wrong, but if I wanted meat, I'd eat the real meat, if I could eat it. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'd be looking for fake meat. And you'd be choosing free range. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know many vegetarians here, but I would have to say, this lady that was a friend of mine, she actually said she would not eat fake meat because mm. she's against killing animal, anything to do with that but side If they of made it synthetically, so not even from, from cow, cattle cells, meat. yeah, that's the thing. Would you guys eat fake, would what you do you eat reckon, synthetic Cam? meat? Uh, I think probably we'll end up eating it whether we know it or not. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's um, the and that's the unfortunate thing as such. I'm trying to be a vegetarian yep. and, and what I'm doing, I'm doing baby steps. So what I'm doing is just eating what I consider ugly, unattractive animals. So I'm just at the moment kind of eating fish and okay. occasionally ugly chickens. But what I have started doing is I've started having the corn, Q-U-O-R-N, yes, which is a substitute. Yep. And the schnitzels and things, they're absolute, I know. And yeah, Linda McCartney's got a range yeah. as well. Mm. 
fantastic. If you are trying to be a bit more aware, obviously I work at the RSPCA, mm -hmm. very much like you, this is something that I'm doing on an ethical kind of, you know, if you've got your cows and stuff and they're being treated well, no problems. But yep. just personally, I would prefer not as much as I can eat Fair enough. that sort Came of meat. So. I don't eat a lot of meat, so I think if we ran out of meat, I'd just go without and eat the soy-based foods. And I don't think I would want to spend a lot of money on something that's been built in a lab. Fair enough. Alex, anything else to wrap up? No, I that's had it. kind of pretty much the same I don't, thing. I don't think it's going to pick up. I think it's no, a lot it's of money expensive. and all you're trying to do is pacify the people who eat do you meat. Know, do you know what's scary though? Yep. Like if they are making these things in the lab, mm. just yep. thinking out loud here, and you know when you've got all those preservatives and mm. stuff and you've got use-by dates five years in advance yeah. on some products you can buy on the shelves, mm. what is plastic. that doing to yeah. your insides? Not a lot. Horrible actually. Keep Killing you. You won't live long you. enough to find out. Well, really? you will. That's it. You'll just, <laughs> you will live another hundred years. Okay. I see. Thank you. Alex, last words? I was just going to say, Apparently, um, within the next 20 years, uh, our meat consumption will go up by two thirds. Oh wow! wow. So that's why they're trying to find a sort. Mm. Yeah, we He's can't sustain up. it. Yeah. Can I, can I get you all to hold a picture? Because <laughs> oh, Cameron no. Kippen made these for me. Sure. Oh, thank you, Cameron. Political. Well, you got you got. <laughs> on that note, thank you very much to Cameron Kippen, a la um, Penny Wong, a la Rudd, of course. Uh, oh, I didn't know if I gave you that one. Oh, well, I'm a thank rude man. Much. I'm a rude. Natalie Cam uh, Foster, <laughs> nearly called you Cameron again. Kama, thank you very much. You got the good one there. And of course, Julia Bishop is, of course, <laughs> Alex Kearns. Thank you very much for being on Bitchin today. Have a good election, guys, because we won't see you before the election. Hope you, you vote Liberal. If not, you vote Labor. <laughs> and if not, you vote Green. Vote whatever way you like. That's why we love this democracy.